In this video, we're going to focus on the half reaction method used to balance redox reactions. We're going to consider an example using a neutral solution, an acidic solution, and a basic solution. So let's start with a neutral solution. Let's say if aluminum metal reacts with nickel plus 2 and it produces the aluminum plus 3 cation and nickel metal. Go ahead and balance this reaction using the half reaction method. Now when balancing a redox reaction, you need to make sure that not only the particles are balanced, the atoms and the ions, but also that you have charge balance. The charges must be balanced on both sides. In this example, we have one aluminum atom and ion on both sides, and we have a nickel particle on the left and one on the right. So the atoms are balanced, but however the charges are not. The left side contains a net charge of positive 2. The right side contains a total charge of positive 3. So this reaction is not balanced yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to separate it into half reactions. Let's start with the first one. Aluminum becomes Al plus 3. Now in order to balance it, we need to balance the charge. The net charge on the left is 0. The net charge on the right is 3. So the difference between these two numbers is 3. We're going to add 3 electrons to the side with the higher charge. And so the first half reaction is balanced. Whenever the electrons are on the right side, this half reaction represents an oxidation reaction. Now let's move on to the second half reaction. Nickel plus 2 turns into nickel. Now, in order to balance the charge, we got to add two electrons to the left side. So whenever the electrons are on the left side, you have a reduction half reaction. Now, before we can add the two half reactions, we need to make sure the number of electrons are the same on both sides. The least common multiple of 2 and 3 is 6. So we need to get 6 electrons on both reactions. Let's multiply the first one by 2 and the second one by 3. So what we're going to have is 2Al, which becomes 2Al plus 3, plus 6 electrons. And then below that, 3 nickel 2 plus cations, plus 6 electrons, which becomes uh, 3 nickel atoms. Now we're going to add these two half reactions. Notice that the electrons cancel. When that happens, the charges will be balanced. So I'm going to put this up here. So on the left side, we have these two. We have two aluminum atoms reacting with three nickel ions. And on the right side, we have those two species. Two aluminum cations are being produced and three nickel atoms. So notice that the number of nickel particles is the same on both sides. And the number of aluminum particles is the same. And the total charge is the same. On the left side, it's 3 times 2, which is positive 6. And on the right side, it's 2 times 3, which is positive 6. So when balancing a redox reaction, you need to make sure that the number of atoms are the same on both sides. And also, the total charge has to be the same on both sides. Now let's move on to our next example. Zinc reacts with bromate to produce the zinc cation and bromide. Balance this reaction under acidic conditions. Under acidic conditions, you can add H plus and water to balance a half reaction. So let's start with zinc. In order to balance this half reaction, all we need to do is add two electrons. Now let's move on to the second half reaction, where bromate becomes bromide. Now we already have one bromine atom on both sides. So the next thing we need to do is balance the oxygen atoms. And to do that we gotta add water. So we need to add three water molecules to the left side, I mean the right side, in order to balance it. So we have three oxygen atoms on both sides. But now we have six hydrogen atoms on the right side. So we need to add six H plus ions to the left. Now that all the atoms are balanced, 
we need to balance the charges. The net charge on the left side is negative 1. The net charge on the right side is 6 plus negative 1, which is positive 5. The difference between 5 and negative 1 is 6. If you take 5 and subtract it by negative 1, this is equal to 6. So therefore, we need to add 6 electrons. Now, should we add it to the left side or the right side? You should always add electrons to the side with the higher total charge. So in this example, we're going to add 6 electrons to the left side. And so now the second half reaction is balanced. Now we need to make the number of electrons equal on both sides. So therefore, all we need to do is multiply the first half reaction by 3. And so it's going to be 3 zinc atoms producing 3 zinc ions and 6 electrons. So now we can add the two half reactions. To do so, we need to cancel the 6 electrons on both sides. And everything else we can bring down. So this is on the left side of the arrow. So we can bring it down on the left side. And then we have these two species. And on the right side, we have three zinc ions, one bromide ion, and three water molecules. So now let's make sure that everything is balanced in our final answer. So we have one bromine atom on both sides. We have three zinc particles on both sides. Six hydrogen atoms, three times two is six. And now let's check the total charge. The total charge on the left side is six plus negative one, so it's positive five. On the right side, it's three times two, which is six, plus negative one, and so that two is positive five. So now the total charge is the same, and the number of particles is the same on both sides. So therefore, this is the balance chemical reaction. Now let's try another example, and let's balance it using the half reaction method under basic conditions. Under basic conditions, you can add hydroxide and water to balance a half reaction, but it might be difficult to do so. An easier technique is to start by balancing it under acidic conditions and then add hydroxide to both sides of the reaction. So I'll illustrate that with this example. So let's start with the first half reaction. Aluminum produces this polyatomic ion. Now, in order to balance the number of atoms, all we need to do is add four hydroxide ions to the left side. And now the particles are balanced. Now we need to balance the charge. The total charge on the right side is negative one. On the left side, it's four times negative one, or negative four. So these two numbers differ by three. Now, should we add the three electrons to the left side or to the right side? Which number is higher on a number line, negative four or negative one? Negative one is a higher number. So we need to add three electrons to negative to the right side. So now the charges are balanced. The net charge on the right side is negative one plus negative three, which is negative four. Now let's move on to our next example. Perchlorate turns into chloride. So for this one, I'm going to balance it first as if it's under acidic conditions. So I'm going to add four water molecules on the right side so that the number of oxygen atoms will be the same on both sides. So we have four oxygen atoms on both sides. Now I have eight hydrogen atoms on the right side, so I'm going to add eight H plus ions. Under basic conditions, the hydrogen ion is virtually non-existent, so we need to get rid of it. So I'm going to add eight hydroxide ions to both sides. When you mix H plus and OH minus, you're going to get water. So therefore, 
these two will combine and form eight water molecules. On the right side, I'm still going to have the four water molecules, but I'm also going to have eight hydroxide ions. Now, if you have the same substance on both sides, you could simplify the equation. Let's subtract both sides by four water molecules. And so now we have the balanced reaction under basic conditions. Eight minus four is four. So it's four water molecules plus a perchlorate ion produces one chloride ion and eight hydroxide ions. So notice that the number of atoms is balanced in this reaction. We have eight hydrogen atoms on both sides. And we have eight oxygen atoms on the right side. We have four from water and four from the chlorine ion, the perchlorate ion. Now all we need to do is balance the charges. So the net charge on the left side is negative one. The total charge on the right side is negative one plus negative eight or negative nine. So these two numbers differ by eight and negative one is higher than negative nine. So I'm going to add eight electrons to the left side. Now we need to make the number of electrons equal. So three times eight is 24. That's the least common multiple between three and eight. So I need to multiply this reaction by eight to get 24 electrons and this one by three to get 24 electrons as well. So then this is going to be 32 hydroxide ions plus eight aluminum atoms and that produces eight aluminum hydroxide ions plus 24 electrons. Now let's move on to this one. Let's multiply everything by three. So we're going to have 24 electrons plus 12 water molecules plus three perchlorate ions and that's going to produce three chloride ions and 24 hydroxide ions. So now that we have the same number of electrons on both sides, we can add the two half reactions. So let's cancel the number of electrons. And so on the left, we have 32 hydroxide ions plus eight aluminum atoms, 12 water molecules, and three perchlorate ions. On the right side, we have this stuff, three chloride ions and 24 hydroxide ions. So notice that we can reduce this reaction because we have hydroxide on both sides. So what we need to do is subtract both sides by 24 hydroxide ions. So these two will disappear. So the final answer is going to be 32 minus 24, which is 8. So we have 8 hydroxide ions, 8 aluminum atoms, 12 water molecules, 3 perchlorate ions. And that yields 3 chloride ions, 8 aluminum hydroxide ions. And that's about it. Now let's make sure that the reaction is balanced. So we have eight aluminum atoms on both sides. We have three chlorine atoms on both sides. Now on the right side, we have eight times four or 32 hydrogen atoms. On the left side, here we have eight hydrogen atoms and 12 times two is 24. 24 plus eight is 32. So we got 32 hydrogen atoms on both sides. Now for oxygen, we have eight times four or 32 oxygen atoms on the right side. Here we have 8, this is 12, and 3 times 4 is 12. So 12 plus 12 plus 8, that's 24 plus 8, which is 32. So we got 32 oxygen atoms on both sides. Now the last thing that we need to do is check the charges. So this is 3 times negative 1 plus negative eight. 
So the total charge on the left side is negative 11. And here this is 8 times negative 1 plus negative 3. So the total charge on the right side is negative 11. So once the number of atoms and a total charge is the same on the right side, once you have, once the mass is balanced and the charges are balanced, then the redox reaction is balanced as well. So this is the final answer. So now you know how to balance a redox reaction using the half reaction method under neutral solutions, acidic solutions, and basic solutions. So that's it for this video. That's all I got, and thanks for watching.